Now, I've been sounding the alarm on this particular topic for a rather long time, specifically the topic of genetic enhancement and, in theory, in the long term, genetic engineering. And I've come to call this a biocultural speciation event. And I've used this term a number of times in the past. Now, biocultural speciation is not really anything new. It's been ongoing for a very long time, arguably since before the Industrial Revolution and certainly since the Industrial Revolution. Basically, as soon as there was an opportunity to make use of cognitive horsepower in a way that allowed you to reap profits from it in a way you couldn't say seven or eight hundred years ago. The simple example is the farmer plowing the fields with his horses in the year 1200 might have been in particular cases much smarter than the rest of the population, but there really wasn't very much else he could do with his, say, 145 IQ other than plow the fields with the horses and maybe make his plowing and his crop planting somewhat more efficient. When the Industrial Revolution swings around, though, you have people who can use their cognitive horsepower to take advantage of new forms of technology, which then allow them to make greater profit in the long term, and that is probably the best demarcation point for the actual beginning of the so-called biocultural speciation event that I've been talking about for a while now. And it's about to get a lot hairier, because as you know, and I've talked about this before, people are already very invested in this procedure, which is referred to as embryo selection, which is very simple. You have a whole bunch of embryos, you screen them genetically, and you look for the best traits possible. Now, at this stage, it's all based on probabilities, and it probably will always be based on probabilities. It's simply a question of how accurate the prediction tools are with respect to these probabilities. And in time, they're going to get better and better and better as the human genome is better understood. And setting that aside, this form of technology is already being used rather frequently by people with the money, i.e. elites, to access it. I've talked about this before. And specifically, if you don't believe me, we can talk about an article that was released a while ago that does indeed refer to this. Now, of course, I will be posting a link to the article in the description, but let's read the first bits of it. The title of the article is U.S. Startup Charging Couples to Screen Embryos for IQ. Heliospec services were marketed at up to $50,000 for 100 embryos. Undercover footage shows a U.S. startup company is offering to help wealthy couples screen their embryos for IQ using controversial technology that raises questions about the ethics of genetic enhancement. The company, Heliospec Genomics, has worked with more than a dozen couples undergoing IVF, according to undercover video footage. The recordings show the company marketing its services at up to $50,000 for clients seeking to test 100 embryos and claiming to have helped some parents select future children based on genetic prediction of intelligence. Managers boasted their methods could produce a gain of more than six IQ points. Experts say the development represents an ethical minefield. And of course, you can read the rest of the article, if you will. As I said, link will be posted in the description. Now, why do they call this an ethical minefield? Well, the reason is pretty simple. At this current moment in time, genetic research is primarily being done for the purposes of getting rid of hereditary diseases, such as sickle cell anemia or cystic fibrosis, this sort of thing. And most people are in agreement about the need to get rid of certain deadly diseases, such as these things. And virtually everyone is in agreement, or on the same page, if you will, that people should be actively working towards eliminating these diseases, which unfortunately affect people through no fault of their own. Everyone pretty much agrees with this, save perhaps for some really weird Christians here and there. The real question is, though, and something I've talked about a lot, obviously, but you can't really beat this drum frequently enough, is people wanting to enhance their attributes, not just getting rid of diseases and ameliorating suffering per se. So making people smarter, more conscientious, making them look better, giving them a different eye color, making them taller, making them more athletic. All of these things are at least potentials on the horizon. And the people running this company that I mentioned, Heliospect, are deeply interested in such questions, specifically in this case with respect to intelligence. Now, you may think that six IQ points is nothing, and it's not as much as a full standard deviation, say 15, but it is not nothing. It is pretty significant. And as I said, as the tools of prediction with respect to analysis get better, 
the probabilities will grow greater, and as people understand the genetic basis of intelligence going forward, the gains one could potentially make will be all the greater, and maybe they will arrive at a point where you're talking about a standard deviation or even two. This is no joke. Now let me explain what the actual problem is here, as well as the ramifications. You see, any genetic trait, anyone, is regulated by a principle called regression to the mean. And put in the simplest of terms, all regression to the mean means is when you have extreme traits, genetically speaking, they tend to regress back towards the average. Now that doesn't mean that they become exactly average, it just means that they tend to go back towards that average. And so basically nature, through no intention of its own, obviously this is not related to a conscious process, but nature has dictated that there is essentially a regulatory process in place that makes sure that the extremes don't always win out. I mean, they sort of do win out, but over the long term, the extremes of whatever trait are typically not sustainable. And the question and concern here is, and it's a question and concern that I think a lot more people need to be worried about and be thinking about, is what happens when you have various gene editing or embryo selection technologies available and companies are using them to essentially knock out this self-regulatory mechanism that nature, for better or worse, has given us. Which is to say, regression to the mean can be circumvented by gene editing or embryo selection technologies, because you can predict, probably in the future, with ever greater accuracy and probability, desirable traits in your offspring. And so even if under normal circumstances there would have been some regression to the mean, you can avoid that, you can circumvent it, and you can push for ever higher stats when it comes to the offspring that you want. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, there's some people, a bunch of people, in fact, like Jonathan Anomaly, who's sort of a philosopher of genetics and gene editing technology, who say there's no problem here. This is just liberal capitalism doing its thing. And for some people, that might be true. He's an elite, after all, promoting these technologies. In fact, he's involved specifically in the company that I mentioned. And so, of course, he's not going to object to that. You also have people who run the channel base camp, they've already been using this technology very thoroughly to pre-select their children and optimize for genetic outcomes. And all these people are rich, which means they can afford this technology, which means the advantages they already have in place, i.e. be more intelligent or conscientious or whatever, are advantages that will be further enhanced, thus increasing the gap and the disparities between people. A great deal of human inequality is due to genetic differences between people, where some people win the genetic lottery and others lose big time with everything in between. But if you knock out the self-regulating mechanism of regression to the mean through, by way of modern genomic technology, you can avoid that, and what happens is the gap grows ever greater between the haves and have-nots, and specifically between those who've been genetically blessed and those who have been genetically cursed. And why is this a bad thing? Well, independent of your politics, because I'm not very political to begin with, it's just a fact that when you have a society where the disparities become extreme to the point of incomprehension, that things stop working very well. And we already have degrees of that as it exists now. As I said earlier, this biocultural speciation event has been ongoing since at least the Industrial Revolution, and it will be accelerated manifold with the application of this technology and the improvement and emergence of further genomic technologies. Now, I'm genuinely not a political person. This is simply a human concern I have, because I think it could really lead to the collapse of society as a whole. But for people who are political, they're bloody clueless on both the right and the left. And a lot of this has to do with this slavish adherence on both the political right and the left to the concept of the blank slate, or the tabula rasa, as it used to be called. This idea that every human being has equal potential, is equally moldable and shapeable to whatever he wants to be, or to whatever the environment you give that person wants him to be, that's the kind of thinking that is leading us off a cliff into the disaster zone. Because these people, whether they are right-wing or left-wing, don't think that genes matter a whole lot for anything in life. And they are bloody effing clueless. The primary reason why there are disparities between human beings is due to genes. Because as I said, some people win the genetic lottery and some people lose it big time. And as I said, what happens when you can circumnavigate that? What happens when you can push past the principle of regression to the mean? 
well, a very, very dystopian future indeed. Now, on the left side of things politically, these idiots think that everything is social, everything is environmental. You just flip a few switches and you can turn morons into geniuses and unathletic klutzes into world-class athletes. Some of them really believe this. And even the people that don't have this extreme view of everything is environmental or social, they still believe, prevailingly, that most things are environmental and social, and you can basically nurture genius, you can nurture talent out of nothing, essentially. And yes, the left are a bunch of morons for believing this. And on the right side of politics, you have other morons, typically religious people and people who believe in the nonsense about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, conveniently ignoring the fact that your very ability to pull yourself up by your bootstraps is mediated by your genes, i.e. your conscientiousness, which you did not choose. It was given to you by your genes and an environment you didn't control to begin with. And the rather stupid belief that hard work can actually, in most cases, outpace or outwork, no pun intended, intelligence. Make no mistake, conscientiousness, hard work are important, but they're also very much genetically regulated. But on a balance of probabilities, intelligence will usually beat out hard work because intelligence just equates to your ability to solve problems. And if you can solve problems more efficiently, more quickly, that means less time invested, less time spent on things, which means you can divvy up your time a lot better and you can devote your time to more and increasingly complex projects, which means, yes, an intelligent person with even a modicum of conscientiousness will outstrip a conscientious person with average intelligence. And this just means that both political aisles, left and right, are shooting themselves in the foot about this issue because they are goddamn clueless. They just don't think genes matter that much. And then on the other hand, you have the so-called hereditarians. And that is just a not-so-fancy term for people that believe that genes actually matter for outcomes in life. And that absolutely includes, obviously, the people I mentioned, such as Jonathan Anomaly, this philosopher of genetics or gene editing, if you wish to call him that, and base camp, which is this couple who are spending their wealth on enhancing their offspring. But it also probably includes most wealthy elites who tend to pay lip service to the dogma of the blank slate, but don't actually believe it. Very, very common. And when these elites continue to make use of this technology and slowly but surely outstrip us beyond the level they've already outstripped us just due to luck and kismet, and I mean myself and the rest of us, will get left behind in the dust on a level that you can't even imagine. Just wait 30, 40, or 50 years, and this technology will get insane. And it's unlikely to receive a markdown in price anytime soon, unlike a lot of technologies. Eventually it might happen, which means the already rich, hyper-intelligent elite will continue to profit from this technology, whilst everyone else is condemned to play catch-up long-term. And this isn't like a smartphone or a mobile phone. Once the advantage add further advantages to themselves, they're going to have these advantages, and they're going to push past the rest of us even further, and society is not going to look good as a result, I assure you. People need to be thinking about this and talking about this a lot more. This isn't a political issue, it's a survival issue. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Many special thanks to my patrons and my donors on PayPal. You guys are the best, essential for the channel's survival. Without you, it could not exist. Thank you so much. And if you can hit the bell icon to be informed of my videos, it would be much appreciated. And if you can do the usual YouTube jazz of leaving a like, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, it'd be doubly appreciated. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out then. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye for now. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.